preferred, how do you adjudicate between seemingly contradictory scriptures that support oh, one the, way or yeah. the other over once the, saved, always saved? There's no contradictions in the Bible, by the way. Yes, there are. Okay, so how do you how do you how do you adjudicate between competing interpretations in scripture? I don't have to. Well, I'm asking you, if you have two people who disagree about scripture, how do you adjudicate between the two? You look or at what you the just text always right. actually says. Right. Well, that's but not an answer. Right. That's not that, an answer. That's because what you're doing right. is you know, you're offering a circular argument, right? Yeah, what I'm independent verification do you have to adjudicate between two competing scriptures preferred? Doesn't sound like he has you one. His, an his you answer should have Do you want me to help you out? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, sure. So you're going to have to refer to general re revelation right, rather than special revelation. And that's not gonna, that's going to equally be a problem for you, because there's nothing out in general revelation that's going to pr disprove one interpretation over the other. So you're forced well, to make circular argument. I think what he should have said, Michael, is that he receives his adjudication from the witness and testimony of the Holy Spirit. But since me and you <laughs> both know <laughs> that the witness and testimony of the Holy Spirit is in itself personally subjective. He's right. left with the same problem, which is why we had that one conversation before about can you objectively justify salvation? The answer is no. Well, I'd like to hear preferred, you know, give his account. You're objecting and we're just wondering what, what the substance of the objection is preferred. No, I was actually objecting to that precept isn't biblically based, which it is. Isn't biblically based? Yeah, you guys were saying like presuppositionalism isn't biblically based. No, we said that presuppositionalists don't engage in scriptural argument. They don't bring oh. up scripture. Yeah, you only do a Bible study with a Christian. I see I found oh, why, the Wait, why is why is that preferred? Because uh, they're already rejecting the Bible wholeheartedly. So doing a Bible study with someone who's already rejecting the Bible is just a waste of time. You assume that everybody who isn't a Christian is automatically and inherently rejecting the Bible? Yeah, because they're not. They're That's a implicit pretty big premises. Claim, yeah, there's implicit premises and not being a Christian world viewer. That right. So a person who is agnostic to it all is implicitly rejecting the Bible. Yeah, and God. No, that's just categorically false. It's false by definition. Uh, Are you a presuppositionalist, mate? Of course. Why would I be anything else? It's not a rejection of God. It's a rejection of the God concept. Okay, you so you're you a presuppositionalist. I haven't spoken to a presuppositionalist in a long time. So, Michael, if you'll allow me to go down a rabbit hole for a minute. Um, thank you for the pick. Um, your entire shtick is based on a subjective, non-justified, arbitrary assertion. And yet you assume that your non-justified, subjective, arbitrary assertion is superior and correct to what anybody else's subjective, arbitrary, non-justified assertion. Can you show why yours is superior or correct to anyone else? Yeah, because I'm using uh, virtuous circular reasoning. Um, I don't care if you call your circular reasoning vir virtuous and label somebody else's as vicious. I don't care that you're using circular reasoning. I'm asking you why you assume that your basic presupposition, which has no justification, is subjective to you individually and is by definition arbitrary. 
is correct and someone else's is not because you hold to the idea that you presuppose God as the necessary being for the existence of the universe, intelligibility, the uniformity of nature, the existence of rational minds and logic. But that presupposition is not based in any of those things. It's, it's based, based on Hebrews 6.13, for when God made the promise to Abraham, since he could swear by no one greater, he swore by himself. You think that the Bible can be used as an empirical justification against an atheistic argument? Uh, no, that's why I use transcendental reasoning, and I don't have to quote Hebrews 6.13. Right, so then it just goes back to the unjustified, arbitrary, subjective presupposition. Oh, no, but it's not arbitrary. God it has a very good prayer. reason to swear by himself, and this reason explicitly stated in Hebrews 6.13, but you're not there's no God. greater by which to swear. But you're not God, and you have no way of showing that your presupposition to the God that you believe in is any more or less relevant than the presupposition of anybody else who believes in any other God. Simply because you have your book and they have your book doesn't make you correct. Oh, no, I'm correct by the impossibility of the contrary. That's an illogical argument because there is plenty of possibility. No, there's there only no two worldviews. False. You are asserting that without any ability to show that it is true. My ability to show is true that there's either God or not God. You think that there are some other God? only two options? Yeah, there's only two options. As God? Wait a second. Are you defining God as some just being without any probabilities or do you mean to say the christian god the christian god of the bible is what i mean when right I say god. so then no there isn't an impossibility of the contrary because there's 4826 individual gods known of on this planet and billions of populations out in the universe through across trillions of star systems you think you have the impossibility of the contrary that is epistemic nonsense the Muslim worldview, the Jewish worldview, the Hindu worldview, the Buddhist worldview, the Manichaean worldview, the Zoroastrian worldview, the Jainistic worldview. You don't Just need to, to list them because few. there's only not God worldviews. There's only two worldviews. False. False. Yeah, not Muhammad, not Muhammad or Muhammad. Any other view that is not the Christian view is a relevant view in the context of the syllogism. So if you want to say that the Christian God or the not Christian God argument, then you have a valid dichotomy. But then you have to show, then you have to show why all of these other worldviews are impossible and that your worldview is the only possible one. And I don't have to show do it. it. I don't have yes, to show you do. it. You're the one making the argument. You are saying that no, I argument as to why to all other worldviews are incorrect. Demonstrability you... is only possible in the Christian worldview. Therefore, I don't have to prove false. that all other worldviews are false. That's because another Christian false. worldview is the only one that provides. Well, then, if it's possible in the world under your worldview, you should be able to demonstrate that it's correct. I yeah, can't do it. But there's no, only two can't. worldviews: my worldview an and your worldview. So demonstrate. That's, no, there's there's how many people are in this room right now? Let me look. There are 22. 22 people in this room, right? There are 22 distinct worldviews in this room, even if there is some overlap. I'm a Christian. You're a Christian. Does that mean our worldview is the same? Fuck no. Yeah, I know you're not a Christian, though, because I use Matthew 17. What does Matthew 17 have to do with this discussion? Sorry, Matthew seven sixteen. You will know them by their fruits. Grapes are not gathered from bushes, nor figs from thistles, are they? Right. You right. So you claiming now that talking to me for a minute and a half. No, I've known you for a while. I just haven't talked to you in a long time. Okay, but you're saying you have access to the entirety of my life. You're saying that you have access to the personal relationship that I have with Christ. You are saying that on the internet you have access to the things that I do on a daily basis with people you've never fucking met or will never meet. No, I just judge you by your fruits, by what I do know. Right. Okay. So basically, a load of nonsense plus a load of nonsense equals what? A load of nonsense. You right now, you are holding a position that you can presuppose God and that that gives you, gets you out of logical contradictions. The problem is, is that the book that you base your view in 
is contradictory. The views that you hold are contradictory to the book that is contradictory that you. Yeah, hold. that's not true. There's and no the contradiction. Author, the and the author of the position in which you hold, which has been watered down across the years through internet apologists, is contradictory to the view that the person that you hold uh, the view originally from is contradictory. So you're just nothing but contradictions. And you assert in this room that you have the capacity to presuppose something and that everybody else is wrong. That's Everyone has presuppositions. Valid. Yeah, and everybody's presuppositions are just as arbitrary and subjective as your presuppositions. And yet you think that your presuppositions are somehow more valid and, log and, and epistemically true than everybody else's because you believe in a book. By the way, you believe in a book. You are, I'm going to assume, some kind of Calvinist. Am I correct in that? No, I'm the same as Darth Dawkins. So a Molinist? If that's what you think Darth Dawkins is, I don't think that's what he is. I think he's an evangelical right. Christian. Right. So, oh, an evangelical Christian. Okay. So, a Calvinist. So, you're an idolater because you don't worship God and you don't worship Christ and you don't worship the Holy Spirit. You worship a book. You have divorced no, that's yourself not true. from the message of Christ. You use the book to justify your reprehensible preaching and actions towards other people, Christian or otherwise. And Matt you Slick hold would disagree. book up to be holy. Matt Slick is an idolater. Kent Hovind is an idolater. Ken Ham is an idolater. Darth Dawkins is an idolater. Saitan Brutengate is an idolater. None of those people worship God. They all worship a book. And their actions, you want to talk about fruits? You want to talk about holding somebody up to Christian values, holding their fruits up, and you will know them by the things they say and the things they do, and you think Darth Dawkins is an example of what a Christian should be? Have you lost your mind? You think that is the way that Christians should propose themselves to the rest? Is it any wonder that people are running away from the Protestant faith? It's because of people like you. It's because of your attitude. And it's because of people like you, the LGBT people and black people and Asian people and Muslims are running away as fast as they fucking can. And none of what you said is in the Bible, sir. Excuse me? What you said wasn't biblically based. What, what wasn't, wasn't biblically based? Which part of hope, salvation, love, empathy, kindness is not preached by Jesus Christ. Where, sir, does it say that Jesus Christ would condone a man standing up in front of a group of people who may be there to hear his word and calling them retards, idiots, and all other kinds of horrible things? And you say that you're just like Darth Dawkins? That's what you think Christ messages? To he called the Pharisees uncircumcised in their hearts. That was pretty bad. He can you can't. answer the can you, wait wait can you answer her yeah question? Jesus said either you are with me or against me so obviously right. you're the homosexual against that's not an answer Muslims are against Jesus that's not an answer what's the scripture and verse that's in contention here with what Kathleen said I mean I got I got my Nashville Bible in front of me so I'm all ready to go yeah you Matthew twelve thirty. Let's go to it. Get the concordance out. I love how he goes to Matthew and not Mark, by the way. He who is not with me is against me. Okay, so let's see here. Let's compare the basic ideals of Christ against the person you say you are, right? Basically an acolyte of Darth Dawkins. So mm. Christ says, turn the other cheek. Christ says to give to the poor. Christ says to invite the stranger into your home. Christ says to love your enemy. Christ says that there are only two commandments to follow, honor God and love your neighbor as you would love yourself. Christ mediates to Semites. Christ mediates to all kinds of reprehensible people, tax collectors, Roman soldiers, Lepers, murderers. Darth Dawkins, on the other hand, 
cusses people out, belittles them, makes fun of their appearance, makes fun of the way that they talk, makes fun of their ages, makes fun of their handicaps, makes fun of their disabilities, makes fun of the places that they were born, makes fun of their family, has never what? preached a message of hope and salvation in his and entire life. Yes, he has. Oh, oh but what does he do no, after he does all he those things, Captain? He does one other thing after he does Simply all those things. Simply saying Captain. that Christ is the only way to not go to hell is not a message of salvation. Yeah, it is. Uh, no, it is it's not. Yeah, you, find so. me, no, you find me a sermon by Christ that is as simple as, believe in me or you're all going to die. You find me that message in that, right? You won't find I it just, because Christ never gave a short sermon. Wait a minute. I just want to know what the verse, what work he thinks the verse is doing. Preferred, could you explain that? What verse? The verse that you just cited. Yeah, either you with me or against me. No, that's the Bush. What doctor. work is that doing? Well, wait, wait, hang on. What work are you, is that doing for your point? That's saying that presupposition is true. There's only two worldviews, God and not God. How are you exegeting that from the text? Because I'm reading the text for what it says. Take are you saying that it's logically impossible for there to be some other option like some other god? Yeah, without the god of the Bible, you can't make sense okay, of anything. So, Those other okay. gods are imaginary, sir. Yeah. Okay, uh, so I'd just like you to demonstrate that it's impossible. I just want you to demonstrate that it's impossible for some other god. We're uh, no, I can only argue for uh, two worldviews at the same time. So I could argue for my worldview versus your worldview. So it just worldview. seems that that's like because a you lack. are. That seems uh, like a hole in your apologetic. That you can't demonstrate the claim that you're making that a third option, right? That some other god could account for the laws of logic or could account for reason. Just seems like a hole in your understanding. Can you demonstrate it or no? I can demonstrate it because my worldview is coherent and yours is not. That's not an answer. That's, That's irrelevant. Not a demonstration. You're That's not answering my I would question. first have to know what your worldview is because I don't no. have to matter. demonstrate all other worldviews. It doesn't like matter. You, you have to demonstrate Kathleen, your Kathleen, world Kathleen thanks. Kathleen, Kathleen, I appreciate it, but give me a second. Look, sorry. I understand you want to turn this on me, sweetheart, but you're the one that piped up with the claim. Sir, you're not I'm speaking from neutrality. I'm just looking for you to demonstrate. I'm just looking for you to demonstrate the claim that you've made. Please give me the deductive proof that a third option is not possible. We all wait. So you have your worldview, and I have mine. Because you have your worldview, you already dismiss, dismiss all other worldviews via the law of non-contradiction. And I already dismiss all other worldviews. So when I speak to you, there's only two worldviews. False. You're just reasserting the claim. And no, that was false. a demonstration. No, that wasn't you are just Kathleen. Oh, really? So you have more than one second? worldview, sir? I am asking you to demonstrate the claim. Give me the deductive proof that this is a dichotomy. Yeah, the God of the Bible says either you're with him or against him. There's That's only God and reasoning. not God. I am using circular reasoning. Question, it's virtuous. Do you, accept que do you accept question begging arguments for accounting for reason? Oh, oh no, I don't like question begging arguments, but mine isn't one because mine's How not arbitrary. Not? Uh, yeah, mine because an ultimate, yeah, an ultimate authority can only verify itself. There's nothing greater to appeal to than God himself. And that's what God swore by in Hebrews 6.13. So you, you're saying that it's the impossibility of the contrary, but I'm still waiting on the deductive proof that that's the case. Any day. Sir, all I just have to do day. is disprove your worldview, and then is this a, by that is this a proof? Yeah, follows. I know, I know, I know you think that that's the case, but you are the one with the burden who can't demonstrate it. Do you want to try again? Or are you just going to keep reasserting the claim? Because we can do this all night. Sir, sit there and okay, and let me explain yourself? something to you. Presuppositional apologetics involves a very simple procedure and method. Any specific application of this method may be difficult or get complicated, but the method itself is very simple. 
involves two steps, one offensive and one defensive. Offenses, internally analyze the non-Christian worldview and show how it's contradictory. Hey, hey, just real quick before you go on, I'm going to let you finish, right? Like Taylor Swift, I'm going to let you finish. But could you just copy paste the shit you're reading from into text chat? <laughs> yeah, like, come on, man. There's no way you were like memorizing it. Like, you were just saying that from your head. Like, there's no fucking chance. Sir, I was trying to explain to him how presuppositional apologetics work. Yeah, but work. you were reading that. Like, if you don't, like, uh, if, yes, you don't sir. if you don't understand yeah, how to argue what you're arguing, I read the then, Bible too, troll. sir. Well, I mean, sir, I've, I, I've argued with the source, so I'm not really too worried about arguing with a little, like, I'm not, you, you're kind of like, it kind of seems like you're like, if you take, like, Mr. Batman or, like, Dark Doc and Schmegma and, like, leave it in a Petri dish, that's, like, what you kind of remind me of. <laughs> yeah, this guy has no fucking clue. He's got no clue whatsoever. And by the way, Michael, I apologize for interrupting you. I wanted to point out that no, he you're just... Fine. He he literally, in his attempt to explain to you what presuppositionalism is, completely denied pluralism. Yeah, there is no such thing as pluralism. What are you talking about? If there was no such thing as pluralism, we wouldn't have an entire understanding of what pluralism is. Sir, there can be contradictory notions that can be dismissed. Don't call me sir. I'm not a fucking sir. I'm not your sir. I'm never going to be your sir. You don't I'm worship being respectful. God. Really? No, you're not. You're being intentionally disrespectful. Spoilers. See, I don't mind people calling me sir in this room who know me. And I don't mind Mr. Batman doing it because me and Mr. Batman get along. But you are being intentionally disrespectful. And I don't tolerate that. You have no understanding of the worldview in which you claim to hold that you're proffering on us. You assume that people in this room have not been dealing with the likes of Saitan Brutengate and Matt Slick and Darth Dawkins long before you came into this room. Everybody in here knows you stick. The problem is, is that you're horrible at giving it. You've made claim after claim after claim after claim without giving any type of justification for your arguments. And your scriptural backing, I'm just curious, just a curiosity, maybe, maybe not. But can you tell me in, uh, in the verse that you're giving, Matthew chapter 12, verse 30, can you tell me what that verse has to do with that particular chapter? Can you tell me what Jesus was doing at the time he gave that verse? Yeah, didn't think so, right? That verse is part of like a 14-verse section on Jesus dealing with the Pharisees, Beelzebub. But you didn't know that because you only knew the one little verse because you've never read the Bible. There's also Luke so, 9.50. Right, I didn't ask you about Luke 9.50. I'm not interested in you throwing out one little verse here and one little verse there. Because it's obvious that you've never actually read the books in which it's come from. You just know a couple. You're the John 3.16 guy. You could throw out a verse here or a verse there, but you've never actually read the context. I you have read the entire read the Bible, Bible sir, verse by verse. I don't believe you. I don't believe you because you have just demonstrated. Uh, what? By the way, Matthew chapter 12, one of the more well-known chapters in the Bible, Jesus dealing with Beelzebub, one of the most, one of the more well-known examples of Jesus' power over the material world in which we live in, and you were silent. You had no clue, right? You're the one throwing out the verse. You had no idea about the greater context of the verse inside the chapter and inside the uh, the entirety of Matthew. So, no, I don't believe that you know the Bible. I also don't believe that you know presuppositionalism. I also don't believe that you have a defense of it, because if you had a defense, you would have offered some kind of justification. You said that your presuppositions are not arbitrary. They are by definition arbitrary. The fact that you didn't know that tells me that Kathleen. either you are a <clears throat> fucking troll. Yeah. Kathleen, I just – so the idea is that um, – because I'm just going to assume for argument's sake or discussion's sake, the, the principled stance of the presuppositionalist. And my position 
is based on a book. So it's by definition not arbitrary, right? But I had a question for you, Kathleen. Maybe you can help me out because Preferred seems to be struggling with this. Who exactly decided which books of the Bible were going to be included? Um, one of the councils. Um, right. one, of the, one of the councils after Nicaea. I forget the exact... But these by the definition... Well, it would... I mean, that you could argue that it was, that it was Nicaea that closed the canon. But yeah, there was... It was an establishment. And wouldn't, wouldn't you say that that decision or the list, I think it was by Athanasius um, who wrote the original list, that, that, is not, that that's not free from opinion of men and it is thus arbitrary what books go into the Bible? The, the entire process by which the New Testament was created is entirely arbitrary and impugned with the opinion of men. Hmm. That's interesting. So it seems like Preferred's accusation that our understanding of um, how, how we reason about the world um, being arbitrary is sort of a lame, lame duck accusation. It's not an objection because the same could be rendered against his position. His worldview falls prey to the exact same objection in that it is all equally arbitrary which sort of Correct. supports your point that he's an idolater and worshiping a book. Yeah. I mean, the fact that the question that you asked him 15 minutes ago, the fact that he didn't immediately go to the Holy Spirit leads me to believe that one of the things that he would say if he, if, if he spoke up again would to tell, be to tell us that the Bible is the ultimate and final authority of God's will on earth. Yet, Michael, you know as a prior Christian, and I know as, an, as, a, as a current Christian, that God's final authority on earth is the Holy Spirit, which descended upon the Twelve and then was passed out. He's awful quiet. I don't want to repeat myself, so. I you just wonder why you guys keep coming back into these rooms, like, you know we know how to deal with you handedly. Whoa, sir. Yeah. The Holy Spirit works to save people. I'm just spreading the gospel. Yeah, you know, have that's not what you're doing with presuppositionalism. Right? Well, then, yeah. I'll, I'll tell you what. I'm doing non-Bible you... Bible studies. Yeah, I thought you didn't do Bible studies with non-believers, stud. What I'll tell you that? something. I'm making you epistemologically self-conscious about your own worldview and your own What's your theory God. of knowledge? What's your theory of knowledge, epistemologist? I'm waiting. What's your theory of knowledge, stud? I'm gonna fucking destroy you. Yeah, I can What's your tell theory he's salivating. of knowledge? What is your theory of knowledge? Get him. What is your fucking theory of knowledge, stud? You're gonna sit there and cower in the corner because you know you've had your ass handed to you? The so fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Oh, fuck. So in what way does God have knowledge? Does God have fear of himself, you fucking idiot? We can only know things in virtue of God. God thinks... How does God, God know things, after. dumbass? How does God know things, dumbass? Because he is the final authority, the absolute upon which there's so everything depends. God, God has schmollage on your worldview. If you define knowledge as fear of the Lord, then God has schmollet. You have no theory of knowledge in which you can meaningfully attribute knowledge to God. You're an idiot. You have no fucking clue what you're talking about. Michael, you mind if I ask him a question just out of curiosity? Go ahead. Preferred, can you give us the gospel? If you're an actual Christian, you should know exactly what I'm talking about. Fill the room real quick, because there's never a bad time to give the gospel, even in a heated discussion. Could you just give the gospel to the room real quick? The gospel is, is that you're damned and doomed before God, and the only way to be saved is to kneel before Jesus and declare that he is Lord with your mouth and believe that God in your heart is true. And you need to pray before God and you need to confess your sins and you need to repent 
And once you repent, you'll be regenerated and you'll be saved through grace alone, not by any measure of good works. You have spiritual rabies and the only cure is by kneeling to Jesus Christ and crying out, saying, Lord, please save my soul. I am damned. Right. So what I was looking for was for I delivered to you as of first importance, what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scripture, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with scripture. That's what I was looking for. But you didn't do a bad job. You already you know that. Bit, yeah. You, I mean, you, if... went a little bit, you went a little bit longer. But again, there's never a bad time to give the gospel, is there? So my next question is going to be this. Are you ready to repent and receive Christ into your life? I already have. Well, then why are you preaching an antithetical message to Christ? Oh, no, I'm just being giving God all the glory. I'm starting with God at square one and giving all the glory to God. Look, look, dude, you don't you don't even know who God is. Sir, you he can't even, you don't even have an account. You can't even account for how God has knowledge, dum dum. Are you the kind of Christian that claims that you have a personal relationship with this God? Because if so, this guy's completely fucking removed from your understanding. You can't even tell me how the guy has knowledge. You're just lost. And you said that you were going to epistemologically destroy me or some shit? You have no fucking clue. I meant to make you self-conscious. So You're an conscious. open theist. No, he You're used an, an even better theist. word. He said awaken. He said he was going to awaken us. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, the I'm funny thing is, is that now. your God, the funny thing is, is that your God's knowledge is contingent on me. Right? God only knows what's going to happen if he has foreknowledge because of the things I do. Do you know what the principle of explosion is? I, I bet don't you don't. Let me catch about. you up. Let me catch you. Let me catch you up. Right. Modal collapse. Right. Your God is said to be necessary. But if any part of him is contingent, then he can't be exist in all possible worlds. And his knowledge is contingent on my actions. Your God can't be omnipotent, omniscient, excuse me, without my actions. Your God isn't even an agent, dude. I can flip the light switch on and off because it has mere dispositional states. That's the thing that you worship. You can't tell the difference between the light switch that I flick on and off and your God because you can't account for your God's agency. Look, son, if you're going to come in here and preach this presuppositionalist shit, you need to get fucking into books. You need to read some Van Til or Bonson, actually read it, rather than going to presuppositionalism.org and coming in here with your rhetoric, because it's not going to work. I'm going to fry your ass every time you come in here. Yeah, every so time. clearly my point has gone way over your head, and you're just talking past me now. There it is. Yeah, you don't even know what you're talking about. You don't know what you're talking about. Can you define arbitrary for us, preferred? What would make a position arbitrary? No justification for it. No justification. And do you believe that arbitrary will, the arbitrary views, stuff that's based on no justification, do you think that those worldview, those views should be taken as true, assumed to be true? No. No. Okay. So explain to me how your presupposition is not arbitrary. Because I'm appealing to the Christian God, and there's no other authority greater to verify. So an ultimate authority can only verify itself. Therefore, it's not on arbitrary when I make that virtuous circle. It's literally arbitrary. You are appealing to a book. No, I'm appealing to God, itself. sir. No, you're not. You're not appealing to God. You're appealing to a book because your knowledge of God came from the book. Yeah, that's special you know revelation. Who God is. No. That's General revelation is, I already know God exists. Special revelation is knowing the Christian God exists. Mm, the Bible's not tell me, tell me, epistemolo tell me, epistemologist, what uh, view of justification do you hold to? Since you don't know knowledge, it's, what view of justification do you hold to? Justify, justified by faith alone. 
What you view of justification do you hold to in terms of epistemology? Do, do you know what theories of justification are? Since you're, you're the one that brought up epistemology. I said epistemologically self-conscious. Yeah, the you're the one that the brought up epistemology. And I'm asking you what theory of justification you hold to. Do you need me to run you through what theories of justification are? Don't. I just because I'm happy to do that for you. Or are you just going to avoid the question? No, you can. You can hide in a corner all night if you'd like. Yeah, I don't think the conversation is going to go very far. It, like, I'm getting the feeling where like he he takes like these long pauses whenever you ask him like any kind of a pointed question. It almost feels like he's on a Wikipedia page. Like, I don't know. It seems like it's like really worthless. He's actually not on a Wikipedia page. It's worse. He's on presuppositionalism.org or whatever the fuck the oh. website is. No, oh. I've used that website before and I was just giving you an example of because and you're, you're trying to it. speak. Because the control. website is trash. You're, spot, you're trying to speak from a neutral oh, position. Oh, this is where he calls me a troll. Allowing oh, this, here access go. to your worldview to show how it's not consistent. So you right. want to sit yeah, there and make claims. You don't need you, my but, worldview. You yes, don't I need do. my worldview to demonstrate your own. No, you don't. Oh, wait. So wait, wait, wait. The truth of your Lord, right? The truth of your God is contingent on my worldview? You're an open no, theist? You, you just want to sit there and make claims without having a skin in the game. You don't that's want to. Right. Hilarious. That's, that's hilarious. That's literally what you're doing. The projection is strong with doing. this one. Yeah, that's yeah, literally that's what you're doing. Well. You know what pisses me off the most about <laughs> presuppositionalists? I'm going to tell you what pisses me off the most about presuppositionalists, especially on the internet, right, is when they come into a room like this, anyone that might have some inkling towards God is running to the fucking hills. The only thing that presuppositionalist has presuppositionalism has ever accomplished is to turn people's minds and hearts away from the Lord, which is literally what God tells us not to do, right? God told to go out and make disciples of all the world, baptizing all men in the name of the Father and the Son and the Spirit. Presuppositionism actually does the reverse to that. It takes people who might be believers or might actually be believers, turns them into fucking atheists. Good job there, sir. Good job spreading the message of God. By the way, you also spread a message of hate, bigotry, racism, and intolerance. I spread the gospel, and then I plant the know. seed, and the Holy Spirit does the rest. I don't convert people. The Holy no, Spirit you don't. does. No, you don't. You are a Judaizer. Wait, um, can I ask for a further question? Yeah, go ahead. I prefer, do you believe that God is all-knowing? Of course, he's omniscient. Uh, does he know what it's like to suck dick? No, because he's not a slut like you. Okay, that's, so you know Batman. Batman. that's literally if Mr. He's... Batman, the exact words he says to me. That's so sad. <laughs> but wait a second. Wait a second. If he's omniscient, if he knows everything, then he <laughs> absolutely not only knows what it's like to suck a dick, he also knows what it's like to get rammed in the ass. He also knows what it's like to have an incestual relationship between a father and a son. He knows what it's like to get beaten in a leather outfit. He knows what it's he like to, knows what it's like to wear a gimp mask. He knows what it's like to get fucked by a horse. He knows what it's like to be a horse fucking another horse. That is necessary if he is omniscient in the way that this guy is saying he's omniscient. God see. That's excellent. Point. That's really amazing to think about. That God knows what it's like. So to do you be still hold that God is fucking omniscient? another horse? That's the best part. Do you still hold that God knows everything? Has omniscient. knowledge of everything? Omniscience doesn't entail no limitations. He doesn't see evil. He doesn't see evil. That's Which part of God doesn't see evil? What do you mean, which part? What are you talking about? I'm talking about God. Well, is Jesus God? 
he doesn't know about evil, so he doesn't know what it's like to suck. Is, dick, right? How does he Jesus not know about evil? So God. he's seen evil. You're right because he was in God with the hypostatic union. God, God knows hey, what it's like. Now you're saying that he has heard. an does the vagina. Holy Spirit not permanently <laughs> reside in all mean? baptized born again Christians? Sure, it does. Can the Holy Spirit exist in an individual and guide them without experiencing the day to day activities of that individual? Yeah. No, because if they couldn't experience, then they wouldn't be able to guide them. So the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Feels and experiences every fucking reprehensible, degenerate thing that anybody who yeah. has ever had the Holy Spirit residing in them has ever done. It convicts their hearts. That's irrelevant to whether or not it experiences the Christian getting fucked in the ass by a horse. It does. So God has not only seen evil, according to you, he's also experienced sin. And the reason I asked you which part of God is because your answer no. is supposed to be it is the Father who cannot look upon sin. Not yeah. the Spirit and not the Son. Only the Father. So yes. It's the God agent experiencing being, that the Holy Spirit resides so within yes, and convicts their heart. God being omniscient. God being omniscient, in your understanding of God, your whack out conservative, puritanical view of God, he knows Wait. exactly what it's like <clears throat> to suck a dick. Oh, no, he doesn't. How did Rainy go? <clears throat> Rainy by said she way, was tired. By I... the way, sir, I'd also like to point out that all a person has to do is claimed that the Quran is the final inspired word of God, and the Prophet Muhammad, who rose into heaven on the dome of the rock, is the ultimate understanding of God here on earth. And your view is no longer the impossibility of the contrary, because the Islamic understanding of God just is epistemically valid, just is epistemically coherent, as the Christian will do. For the Allah life, is a liar. So he is Judaism. Why is wait wait a second? Why are you assuming that God can't lie? Yeah, God is always truth revealing. He can't lie. Also, Allah is not all knowing because he got the Trinity wrong. Um, the Trinity is inferred. Nowhere in Scripture does it spell out the Trinity. It was inferred Surah four by and people. say up Surah five it says say not three. I don't care what the surahs say. You're comparing two different religions. You're saying the surah got the trinity wrong. But the surah doesn't need to get the trinity right. First of all, the trinity is inferred. And second of all, Islam is not Christianity. So it doesn't matter whether they got it wrong. The only thing that matters is that it is right. So Allah and the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, are just as epistemically coherent as Christianity, which means your worldview is no longer contrarily impossible. Here's where Kathleen starts talking crazy. See, you've got a oh. fucking problem, mate. You've got a fucking problem. You've got a big gaping problem. Not only are you an idolater, not only are you a Judaizer, not only do you preach a message antithetical to the word of God, you're preaching Satan's message, sir. That's what you're doing. I know that's no. what you're preaching, but not me. Really? Even if you do, even if you do you tell, just you know, prove Allah, you've got another 6,000 gods to come after that. Yeah, can you tell me the message that I preach? Because if you ask anybody in this room who's heard me quote-unquote preach, they'll tell you that the message that I preach is one of hope, one of salvation, one of removing yourself from the very things that you claim are antithetical to the Christian religion. See, I preached Jesus's message, not Cornelius Van Til's message, not Greg Bonson's message, not Doc Dawkins' message. I preached Jesus's message, which says to invite the stranger into your home. Do you know what that means, by the way? Invite the stranger into your home? 
It's got no. relevance to today's political context. We're talking about immigrants, mate. Jesus wants you to it's... invite immigrants into your home. Jesus wants you to feed the poor. Jesus wants you to provide for the poor. Jesus wants you to mission to the prisoner. Do you do any of that? Does your message have anything to do with any of that? I'll go ahead and answer for you. No. The answer is no, because you're not preaching Jesus' message. You're preaching some fucked up understanding of Paul. And I'm just fucking sick of presuppositionalists destroying Christianity. It's hard enough to come on the internet and be a Christian and convince people to follow God. It's hard enough. And you have an entire subsect of people working against the message of Christ. You coming in here in front of a group of atheists and assuming that your lottie da script is going to convince any of them that you've done a good job, that God is patting you on the shoulder. Slow clap, motherfucker. Well, I am going to speak to Darth Dawkins and Matt Slick. You, and? by all <laughs> means, go speak to Darth Dawkins and Matt Slick. I have no respect for Darth. I have a little bit of respect for Matt. A little bit. People say I'm stupid for believe, you know, having some respect for Matt, but you know what? I do, mostly because I've never seen him rise to the level of degeneracy that Darth Dawkins rises to before he gets his first half-morning wood. You go. You go run back to your dad's and go worship an idol. Go worship a book, some words written on a piece of paper. You go ahead and do that, mate. You love to quote scripture. Yes, many I do. Will come, many will come before me, and I will say on that day, I do not know you. Yeah, and that's what it's going to say to you, sir. Right. You can say that all you want. The problem is, is that my message demonstrates the will of God. Yours demonstrates the will of Satan. Mine starts with God and ends with God. You haven't proven that. You haven't even shown who God is. You haven't proven to anybody in this room that you even know who God is. Yeah, so, proof is different from persuasion. I don't have to persuade you. I just have to give you the proof. You haven't given any yeah, proof. Really You've given, given any proof, arbitrary, unjustified, subjective assertions without any epistemological proof. But I'm not even going to ask you for ontological proof because God knows we don't want to hear you spout some nonsense about that. Can, can I just quickly ask preferred? Preferred, what method did you use to determine that the God of the Bible is, in fact, the, the, the God of reality? Uh, because the God of the Bible revealed it to me that he was the ultimate authority. No, I, I didn't ask what was revealed. I asked what method you used. Oh, circular reasoning. Jesus Christ. Oh, my yep. God. The God of the Bible is true because the God of the Bible says he is true. I right, just well, think so the whole a lot. notion... I think the so whole notion I think the whole notion of having the Bible or God as your ultimate authority is self refuting. No, no, God is my ultimate authority. The Bible is just a tool that God gave us, a special revelation. Well, Even Allah that, that's why I said both. Prove Allah is wrong. You can't. I already did. Allah is no, not all knowing because he got the Trinity wrong. No, he didn't get the Trinity wrong. In Islam the Trinity in the Surah is the Trinity. So no, he didn't get it wrong because Islam supersedes Christianity according to Muslim. So no, you didn't prove anything. The only thing you proved is that the Christian Bible, the Trinity is inferred one way, and in the Quran, the Trinity is inferred another way. That's all you've proven, that there are two different emphases on something that is not spelled out in either book. So once again, slow clap. It's you don't always the any... same every time, right? It's always the same every time. It's just a script, right? Like these guys don't have any it's conceptual understanding. No, it is a script. I mean, or belief. They're not doing epistemology. They're not doing philosophy. Yes, we are. The Christian. No, you know, you were literally reading. You were literally reading from a website stud. 
Yeah, like, you know how I always thought about it? It's like when you go to the facts page of a website and it's like, it has a question, you click on it and it's that answer. It's literally like, that's how I look at them reasoning when they do an argument. It's, it's like, okay, this person asked me this, so here's my default like answer. Like, it, it's the same thing. Like, the more and more I listen to it, it blows my mind more. Like, I, I almost yeah, it's can't believe like it. A, it's like a call center. Press one for this and then yeah, press it's exactly what it is. And, and, you know, the sad part about it is, you know, like, I mean... People have heard me. I can answer all of these questions, right? And and I'm not claiming to be a a, a well-read theologian by any stretch of the imagination, but I can answer all of these questions, every single one of them. I can answer the method by which I arrived at God, the reason that I hold God to be true, my understanding of God who God is, I can speak about God's intentional states, God's agency, God's omniscience, his omnipresence. I can speak to all of that. This guy can't do any of it because he's reached the end of the piece of paper that he's reading off of. So he just has to go back and he just randomly picks a spot and starts over again in the middle. Right, if you actually want to be a defender of God, I've got a suggestion for you, preferred. It's, it's very simple. It starts with some doing something very, very simple. It starts with reading the Bible. It's always a good starting place. You've demonstrated that you've not read the Bible. Darth Dawkins has never read the Bible. Go read the Bible. When you're done with the Bible, when you're done with the Bible, go back and read it again. This time, read it with the Midrash. When you're done with that, then we'll come back and talk about first century church fathers. There's your homework. Go impress me. Go impress your God. I'll start with Genesis 1, 1, in the beginning, God, and I'll end with Revelation, amen. What was the point of that? That's just one of Josh's lines, that's all. Memes, bro, memes. Can you tell me what the usage of the word and signifies, and in the beginning God created the heavens and the firmament? No, what does it signify? You can't? Okay, can you tell me what is signified in the use of the word and in John chapter 1? No, tell me. Oh, yeah, the fucking squad one is laying into him. You can hear it. Hey, shit, wrong button. My bad. Didn't mean to hit that. <laughs> I was wondering what you were talking about. I meant to so talk in the game chat. <laughs> I'm playing the game, my bad. So why don't you know these things, mate? These are kind of basic questions. I've never heard anyone talk about that. Darth has never talked about it, so. Wait a second. Is... <laughs> Wait a second. Did you just say dot? Oh my god. Do you go to church, dude? I don't need to go to church. I just get on Discord and talk to I don't you. need to go to dude, church. You have to be trolling. All right, I'm just saying, me and one other person have been presenting that he's probably trolling for the, like at least an hour, and I'm convinced more and more by the minute that I really think that he's just like having a good time. All right. No, he's not. He's not. He's not. He's not. Listen. It was right, a great so we, conversation with you, Kathleen. We can do that. Hold on, hold on, Preferred. I got one more question for you, because this is going to determine for me whether or not you're trolling. Okay? Can you give me, in, in basic terms, the differentiation between Augustine's views of how sin accumulates in the world and Pelagius's view? of how sin accumulates in the world. Oh, fuck. Yeah, so Augustine says that there's annihilation, and Pelagian says there's not. That has absolutely nothing to do with the accumulation of sin in the world. Well, isn't one saying that you have original sin and the other is saying you don't? No. So, anyway... As, as you were saying, preferred that circular reasoning is, is a method to discovering truth. Can you give us an example of a, a, a truth that you've discovered uh, 
that leads to truth that's not about God. What? All truths have their origin point in God, so I can't know nothing without God first. Does that mean that, that wasn't what I asked? That wasn't what I asked you. You told me that circular reasoning was the method you used to determine that, that God was actually God. I'm just wondering if you could give us another example of circular reasoning oh, leading to some sort of oh. truth. No, you can't give it another example because God is the ultimate authority and he's the only one that can use that circular reasoning. All other circular reasoning, question of begging, it. vicious. Except he's not the ultimate authority. Yeah, I just find it odd that he keeps claiming that, right? So, prefer, let, let me ask you something, right? When you interpret the Bible, right, what do you use to understand the Bible? Well, I was made in the image of God, so I used the agency God gave me. So I know I can't be wrong about some things. Right. So, so... Wait, so, so, wait, hold on, Kathleen. So he says he uses the agency, right? So if you have agency, right, presumably you would have beliefs and uh, the laws of logic, right, would be constitutive of you having beliefs, right? So you would have to use the laws of logic in order for you to interpret the Bible. So it's kind of incoherent to say God or the Bible is your ultimate authority, since that's obviously not the case. In order for you to even understand the Bible or to understand the propositions or anything declared in the Bible, you would have to use the laws of logic. Oh, God is logical. So when he created me, that was already baked in, to, so to say. Yeah, God, God's a slave to, to logic. Yeah. No, he's not. God is logical. That's where logic comes from. Uh, well, that's in incorrect. Can God be illogical? No, but omniscient. Okay, so he's a slave God to logic then. No, it doesn't entail no limitations. There are limitations to omniscient and some. Wait, can, is God contingent on the laws of logic, or is he not contingent on the laws of logic? God is logical. He's not contingent upon them. Logic is contingent upon God. How can it, how, what does it mean for a being to be logical? Can you exposit that? It just if means God that, does not have the ability to be illogical, then he is a slave to logic. No, he's not. No God is logical. questions for him. Has God ever apologized for something that he's done? He doesn't have to apologize. He has sovereign. Damn, my question just got over everyone. Hey, hey guys, can we just do this like one at a time? I mean, I know everybody wants to get in on it because it's a presuppositional. Yeah, it's vastly un uh, unperforming or underperforming. I've, I've performed greatly on the level of Darth Dawkins, but, you know, I don't want to yell yeah. or scream. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You've got the same comedic value as Darth Dawkins. Yeah, you're inflating um, your, your sense of self-importance. But go ahead, Yuri. What was your question? No, I was just going to ask him, how can a being be logical? I don't know what that means. Like, what, what are you trying to say there? Are you trying to say that uh, the laws of logic, because I know preceptors say this, you're trying to say that the laws of logic are a reflection of God's mind. I just don't know what you're saying. Can you, like, flesh that out a bit? Yeah, so God is logical. Since God created everything, then everything would follow God's logic. So he's already logical. He's always existed. He was never created. Right. So if he always existed, he was always logical logic with God. How, that was gibberish. Follow? Wait, why would that follow? I'm just curious. I, I don't see how that answered my question. Can you explain how that follows? Yeah, that just follows because if God is the final reference point and logic comes from God, then everything else would be logical. So the answer is God mean, is logical because final, God is logical. What do you mean by final reference point? Oh, you can't go past God, right? God is the final reference point. There's nothing more reducible than God. Oh, I see. So are you saying that God is necessary? Yeah, he's the necessary precondition for intelligibility. How can a concrete object be necessary? Yeah, because without the concrete object, like, you know, concrete universal God, you can't know anything. Why would I accept that? Because to deny it would lead you to absurdity. What's the argument for that? Yeah, so rejecting God and his revelation uh, means that your worldview is ultimately going to end in absurdity via a reductio ad absurdum argument. 
why would a reduct well, for, for, well there's two problems with that why would a reductio ad absurdum apply and how does that answer my question right so if you reject the god of the bible you won't have any metaphysical standing upon which to stand to explain your world view and the things around you so you just be unintelligible pretty much yeah why would i accept that if i have beliefs and agency right god grants you agency and you just reject uh, god right so you're actually in my world view you're borrowing from my world view but you're just rejecting god in your unrighteousness so you already have my worldview. You're just rejecting it and trying to say that there's something else, but you can't provide anything else. That's just another claim. Can you demonstrate that? Yeah, the proof is that without the God of the Bible, you can't know anything. That's how you demonstrate it. That's another assertion. So, so, so wait, so it seems like what you're doing here, right? So what if I was to tell you that atheism without atheism, you couldn't know anything because atheism is necessary would you accept that no because atheism can't be shown to be coherent only the christian yeah, can because can. you're borrowing from my worldview you're borrowing from my worldview in order to make that decision well that's just a claim you haven't demonstrated that yeah i have demonstrated it because it's uh virtuously the case no you, you haven't shown how atheism is the ultimacy of reality upon which everything depends you've just said atheism therefore atheism i'm saying god therefore god I... yeah it is self-evident and truth revealing and god revealed himself to us so i'm glad to have answered all your guys' question i'm gonna go to the karm server and pray with brojo okay run away, bro. <laughs> yeah pray with brojo run away, oh, okay, i gotta away, step like in here sorry and that but, guy, I made that guy look like a clown. He couldn't, he just kept, I just kept making him make assertions and he just couldn't end. I, I let him not answer any of my questions. And every time he would make a claim, I would just 